Hey, this is Mike Hobbs, and today I want to talk a little bit about teaching kids about money and the importance of that. And, uh, you know, I, I really started thinking hard about this because I look back at my life and I remember, you know, I never got taught. You know, no one ever told me about money. No one ever told me about, you know, how much you should be saving every single paycheck, you know, how much you should put towards investments, how much you should be doing. Uh, and, and really financially educating me. I've never had that when I was growing up. So I started really digging deep into this because, you know, being in the home-based business industry that I'm in, uh, we're really starting to make a lot of money and uh, we're looking to teach our kids uh, some wealth principles and some financial education. So I started buying stuff like the, the cash flow games for our kids. I got this book, uh, Rich Kid, Smart Kid. Okay, and this is actually a book from Robert Kiyosaki. So I bought a bunch of Robert Kiyosaki books uh, that teach. This one actually teaches parents how to, to what to teach your kids uh, for the financial type of education. Uh, then there's those board games and some other cool stuff. But I wanted to point out a couple things on why teaching kids about money in in this industry or in this information age right now is vitally important. Vitally important. Uh, there's a couple points he makes in here, and one of them is based on government studies. So I'm just reading right out of the introduction. It's kind of interesting. You, I got so much value just from the introduction of this book, right? Uh, based on the government study of 100 people, so 100 people at the age 65, so they did a government study. One of them is rich, okay, one out of 100. Four are comfortable, okay, so keep in mind. Uh, four of them are comfortable, one of them is rich, and five are still working. So basically at the age 65, uh, five are still working, four are comfortable, and one is rich. So that's 10 out of 90, right? 56 need government support or family support, okay? And the rest are dead. So I don't know about you, but... I don't want to be in the 56 category where we're still we're, we're actually relying on government support or relying on uh, family to take care of us okay at the age 65 I mean what kind of life is that and then you know five of them are still working their jobs at the age 65 slaving away uh, at the age 65 and there's only five out of a hundred that really make it you know, four are comfortable, one is rich. Now that, to me, is an insane number. And he, he actually goes on to, to explain why and how you actually can uh, avoid this, okay? And a couple other statistics here. Uh, he talks about, you know, the industrial age and the information age and what the difference is. A couple points here. Uh, the industrial age, the employer was responsible for your retirement plan, okay? So back in the olden days, the employer would give you a job and then they would give you a retirement plan. That is no longer the case. The information age, you as the employee are responsible for your own retirement plan. Okay. Uh, if you run out of money after the age of 65, it is your problem, not the company. That is a true statement. True statement. Okay. In the industrial age, you became more valuable the older you got. So the older you were, you are, you actually become more valuable to the marketplace. Not anymore, okay? In the information age, you actually become less valuable as you get older. Interesting, huh? So things are changing. The rules have changed, okay? Uh, the industrial age, people were employees for life. So that was just a fact of life. So the school system started and people were just employees for life so that's what they knew all right information age more people are now free agents okay to really make it in this life you're a free agent okay you're no longer just an employee for life okay industrial age the smart kids went on to become doctors and lawyers uh, they made the big bucks so doctors and lawyers made the big bucks a couple more points here the information age the people who make the big bucks are athletes actors and musicians interesting many of the doctors and other professional people are actually making less than they did in the industrial age isn't that interesting crazy here's one more point on this 
In the, indu in the industrial age, you, become, you could count on the government to bail you out if you and your family got in financial trouble. Okay, you could count on it. Information age, we hear more and more uh, politicians promising to save Social Security and other government safety programs. And you, you and I, and he basically says, you and I are smart enough to know that when politicians begin to make promises to save something, chances are that they are promising to, or what they're promising to save is already gone. Now, those are some interesting statistics, and I really want to point this out. The, there's a big difference between the industrial age and the information age. And the school system, you know, they actually built their school curriculum. There's one more point in this introduction here that I wanted to point out. They actually built the school system back in the industrial age, or, you know, way before that. But the, the curriculum was built for the industrial age. They taught academic education and he actually says this right here and they taught professional education so basically uh, becoming doctors lawyers plumbers mechanics and whatever you want to do to earn money once you leave school that's what their curriculum was back then in the industrial age and it is still now the same curriculum it hasn't changed so the information age hit and it's still the same curriculum can you guys see a problem with this? If you're not adapting to what's happening out there, uh, it's, it's insane. So here's, here's one of the things that they think they're, that he thinks is missing from the education, and that is financial education. Okay, it's not taught in schools, but nowadays the education required to turn money, basically education required to turn money from your profession, whatever you choose to be your profession, and turn it into lifelong wealth and financial freedom or security. Your children don't know about this because it's not taught. You need financial education nowadays in the information age uh, to really succeed, to get past, you know, these little hurdles, the government not helping you, uh, you know, no more retirement plans, etc. If you don't want to be a part of that 56 people who are relying on government or family when you're 65, you've got to get financial educated. You got to teach your kids about money very very important and I suggest also having a home-based business to really uh, you know expand your horizon because like like he was saying in this book most people are free agents to really hit their wealth nowadays and you know becoming an athlete an actor <laughs> you know is not in everybody's future but I truly believe anyone can build a home-based business so I'll have a link below this video. You can find out more about our home-based business. Uh, get with the person who invited you here. Uh, but really the most important thing I want to get out of this video is, you know, get your kids educated. If you need to read this book, Rich Kid, Smart Kid, this is actually for parents. I highly recommend it because it's really going to help you know how to teach your kids, know exactly what they need so that they can succeed. So anyway, my friends, make it a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.